Let's see how to handle multiple inputs with a single on-change handler in React. It's very useful when you have multiple input fields like sign up form. In Ustate tutorial, we see how to handle one or two form fields. But imagine if you have five to six fields and you create state variable for each input and that makes our code messy and hard to manage. So let's see how to handle multiple inputs using single on change function. Here we have fresh app component and in this component, I want to take user details like name, email, password and address. So let's create form. I know some developers don't use this form tag and directly create input elements, but it's not a good practice. Now inside this form, first I want S3 tag and pass name and its input field with type text. Now I duplicate this code three more times by using shift plus alt plus down arrow and change second field as email and type to email. Next for password and type password. And the last one is address and for that we need text area. So I remove this input tag and create one text area. And at the end we need one button type submit and name it submit form. Now save the changes and take a look. See, we get our form with all fields. Now in previous lesson, we create individual state variable for inputs. And then in the on change, we set that value to our state variable. But in this method, we create only one state variable for all input fields. So first, I import use state from React library. And in our functional component, we use use state and destructure it like details and set details. Now I want to pass an object and in that object we have multiple fields like name and its initial value as empty string, email empty string, password empty string and last one address empty string. Now let's create our handle change function and we will call this function on every inputs on change event. So here I write on change and pass handle change function. Now copy this on change and paste it in all fields. So whenever we type in any of these fields, only this function will run. Now most important step and without this step, our this method will not work. So the step is we have to add all fields name as its input name attribute from our state object. Let me show you this. So for name input, we want to store its input value in this name property. So we add name attribute equals to name. Now for email, we want to set this email value in this email property. So we add in email input name attribute to email. Now for password, we pass name equals to password and for address, we pass name equals to address. Make sure you write same name as you write in that object. Now inside this handle change function, we write our main logic. So I use this E as event object for all these fields. And let's console E dot target. Save it and take a look. See, when we type on name input, we get this name input. And when we type in other input, we get that input. So our logic is when we type in input field, first we get that input field name and value. And with that name, which will be same as our details object properties, we replace its value by current value. I know this sounds complicated, but it's not. Let's see this and after that your all doubts will clear. So I create one name variable for e.target.name and value variable for e.target.value and let's console both variables. See, we get fill name and its value when we type in this input fields. Now we just have to set this value inside our state variable related to its name. So write set details and in callback function, we pass previous parameter for previous value. So first of all, we return its all previous values by using spread operator. Now we have to update property with this value. So we know we can access object property by using square bracket and pass this name variable inside it and call on its value. So if we write anything inside email input, then first 
this will return all previous properties and then we find property email and replace its value with that email field value. Simple as that. Let's console this details variable and see if we get values or not. So save the changes and take a look. See when we update any field, we get its value in our state object. Now we can make this code even short by using object destructuring. So I write e.target and using object destructuring, we store name and value in variable. So these two lines are same as this one line. So I remove these two lines. Now I want to console this details object when we click on this submit button. So I create new function called handle submit and console this details object. Now in form tag on submit event, we call this function. Now save the changes and take a look. Let me write all details and then I click on this submit button. See for just one second it's printed and then our form gets refreshed because it's the default behavior of form. So whenever we submit the form, this function will run and then it refreshes the page. So we have to stop this. So we use this e as event object and write e dot prevent default function. This will prevent forms default behavior. So save the changes and take a look. See, we get details in console. So in your project, you can call the API in this function and send all details to server. So I hope you like this method. If you have any confusion, watch this tutorial one more time and try to apply this method on your project. That will clear your all doubts. So till then, goodbye and have a nice day.